All right, we got a 2007 Toyota Highlander V6 with the 3MZ FE limited edition front wheel drive. Um, it's got 223,700 miles on it. And we're going to be replacing the Bank One catalytic converter. Stay tuned. All right, so the car is started, and you can see three uh, warning lights not just the money light, but a VSC light and a track off light are on. As soon as I heard that, I knew it was catalytic converter. Uh, previous, with previous experience in this uh, vehicle, I knew what was up, or at least had a good, good idea about it. Just a side note, the uh, mileage on this car, 223,733, 223,733 mileage. All right, we have the engine off and the car, uh, the ignition is in the on position. I got the uh, El Cheapo low budge, uh, low budget, um, OBD reader here, code reader, got it plugged in. And let's take a look at what we see. Gonna go through the checks. All right, checks have finished. Let's see what we got here. Read codes, current, and yep. P0420 catalyst system efficiency below threshold bank one. If you're going to get a cat code and you got a like a V6 like this car, you don't want bank one. I replaced bank two last year, almost one year ago, and now we got bank two. Excuse me, now we got bank one. So time to deliver the baby. And as you can see, 3MZFE. Take a look in the uh, engine bay here. And the bank one is the closest to the firewall. So it's all down up in that business. Bank two, this one up front here. That one was replaced one year ago. So it's pretty hard to see from up here. This transverse mount, it's also kind of rotated backwards. So we're going to be working from underneath. I don't think we need to remove the uh, plenum or throttle body, any of that, like we did changing uh, that valve cover gasket back there. That was a fun job. Yeah. All right, we got her up on jack stands with the parking brake depressed. And I like to leave my jack with just a little bit of uh, tension in it, just as a backup in case those jacks get a little squirrely. Always uh, try to get three or more points of safety if possible. And we're taking a look that header on the bank one you can see our bolts on the bottom the top bolts are a little bit more difficult to get at we're gonna have to see if we can get a little view of those one of them we're gonna be doing the old reach around on that we're going to have to remove this uh, heat shield to get in there and we're going to take a look. Another heat shield, looks like uh, there we have it, heat shield on the cat <laughs> and then our uh, next set of bolts, next set of bolts there and I think that would do it for getting her out of there. I mean, probably a few other dealios in there. 
All right, before before I take a little break here for breakfast, I'm going to spray down all these bolts with the old PB blaster. Also on these up here, it's the old reach around bolts up top there. All those are going to get a spray. Let them soak a little bit while I'm taking a little 20 minute spot break here. But uh, yeah, I see another bolt up top. Let's see if we can get a view of that one. It's a little tougher, but it's a bracket bolt. Runs all the way down to this uh, transfer case here, this uh, transmission. So that probably coming off. So we'll give that a spray too. There's a little better view of the uh, mounting bracket there. All right, we're gonna go through my parts list here. Here's the cat, and got a part number on that. Two five zero five one dash two double o four o. And yeah, let's do a gasket, exhaust gasket, one seven one seven three dash two double o three zero. This is for my other car. This is the another gasket ring here. We got nine double o eight zero dash four three o three six. It's for the exhaust uh, side not the header side we got some nuts 9080171871 these go with these bolts and that's sorted 90105-a0237 Again, for the exhaust and uh, bolts here. Oh, got the right ones, they look huge. These bolts. All right, that's uh, my little pile. Um, just want to show you. We got one, two, three, four, five, six on the header. Six bolts that are going to have to come out on the header side. Got the two. on the exhaust side there. This 90105-A0237, these are for the uh, other part of the exhaust system. They're not the bolts that I needed. Um, you can see they got these heads on them. The other ones underneath there actually thread into the um, flange on the uh, cat and so I'm gonna have to bust out some torque style bits uh, and get rid of not bits but torx uh, um, sockets torque sockets and uh, get those out hopefully otherwise it's gonna be a little more fun um, but we are replacing these two items you know what I'm talking about Okay, just another quick look. Wasn't able to reach the far um, bolt, header bolt there to spray it down. We'll uh, have to give it a spray a little later when we remove this shield here. Don't forget your exhaust side bolts. Give them a spray. I'm going to get to working on this. Uh, shield here and getting that cleared out and uh, yeah we'll be right back so that's 10 millimeter we'll just get in there crack it loose of course it's not coming in I, I don't know how to do this with the camera but get your 10 millimeter on there and crack her loose Love this little uh, extendo ratchet. It's got 
Well, you can see it's got two heads on it. Two heads are better than one. Quarter, three-eighths, extendo. I'm a shade tree mechanic guy, so I do a lot of Harbor Freight purchases for my tools. So far, so good. All right, the next one we had to get up at was this bolt up top. I just used a wrench, a little 10 millimeter. Just had an angle on it. Cracked it loose. And just keep working that. Get that one loose. Alright. And we got another one up here. I don't know if you can see my finger. Let's see if we can get a little shed a little light on it. Yeah. It's always the hard part in these videos is getting a light. But there we go. That rascal. We'll get that one next. Alright, the last bolt. There she blows. Let's get a little spray on her. So get a look see here some light fun times with lights you know great let's get a zoom that's the clip for the upstream O2 sensor on these Yodas it's uh, not an O2 sensor per se but it's uh, one of those voltage sensors the name escapes me at the moment um, boy, that doesn't want to focus. So we're going to disconnect that sensor. And then we can probably just leave, leave the heat shield on this cat. I don't think anything's holding on to it. So when we pull the cat out, we can swap the heat shield to the new one. Then we got... That bolt bracket there. There she is. That one comes out. And that one will come out. And then we should be able to go on to next step. Alright, so we're Getting in there, I had to hold off on that oxygen sensor thing. Boy, that is, I thought it was just a pinch and pull, but not so simple. And I don't really see any daylight from above to get at it. So I'm going to have to work on that a little bit later. As I was working on it, be careful of this edge on this heat shield. This thing will slice the living daylights out of you. Um, shredded up my glove thankfully only a small little nick from that so I'm gonna go on to these uh, header bolts you're gonna have to bust out your deep well socket and got a 14 the old Harbor Freight again throw a 14 on there check looks to be the right one so I'm going to work on those and I will be back at you. We got that one up in the corner there, as you can see. Right, yeah, not that thing, but right there. Or this one tucked up in the corner pocket. I was able to get in with the, the deep well crank on it. This one. I needed an extension. I've used a little stubby. You just can't get a good purchase from this angle. So I use a little stubby extension, which 
I'm going to use again. Get that sorted out here for the bolt next to it on the left, the nut to come off. And you just gotta find a little purchase in there. Do not strip these. Do not strip these. So just gonna make sure it's secure on there. Yeah. And you gotta get yourself some leverage. So I'm gonna need two hands to work on this bad boy. And then the top are done. Be right back. Like I say, do not strip them, round them, I guess would be better. Do not round off these rascals. You'll be hating life. I can just remove them finger. That last one tucked in there. Get at that. Anyway, not important. Um, I'm going to go up after the next set. Should be pretty much straight shots, famous last words. We'll get after those. Okay, so to get that bottom row, I had to use the extensor, extender again, the extension. And see that little stubby one. Reason being is out of the transmission, we got that shaft, we're gonna bump into that. So try to get an extension on there. Can't be too long because you're gonna bump in to power steering rack, which is what I think that is, power steering rack. Um so yeah. I was able to bust them loose with a little elbow grease and again just make sure you're seated on there nicely You've got a 14 millimeter 14 of course that's not going to focus and seat them on there nicely and then give them the what for give them a good crank and you'll bust them loose I don't know if the PB Blaster made it easier, not a sponsor of course, um, but yeah, I was able to get them loose and just going to loosen them up a little bit more and take them off. Stay tuned. For this bottom bracket, just get, grab another 14, I'd use a shorter one, no uh, long one because got some frame bits, suspension frame bits in the way. and. Just give her a crank off. This was rather easy to remove. Um, I did notice that my 14, um, the deep well was had a lot of play. Even this one does. This is a Craftsman, older one made in the USA. Um, but yeah, quarter inch, but quarter inch uh, end. But yeah, that came off pretty easy. Now we're gonna go up top and. Find that other one right there. We'll get after it. All right, folks. I had to bust out a wrench, a ratcheting wrench, to break that one loose. I just couldn't get a socket in there. There's no good angle. You got these uh, feed uh, feed pipes to the power steering, and they're just stiff so can't bend them out of the way so good old harbor freight ratchet wrench got me done so i'm gonna just remove that and the bracket's done and then i can work my way back here to the exhaust end here and bust those loose come on pb blaster got these busted loose Use the deep well 14 had to get a get some extension on my ratchet Get some good uh, leverage on that one. Around the other side, which is kind of hard to get a good picture of. Let's see here. You don't have a lot of room with it extended. So I had to shrink it up 
which meant more elbow grease. But I got it to break loose. Say PB Blaster helped, but who knows? Not scientific. And uh, boy, making some progress. So I'm going to remove these, and uh, aside from that oxygen, that sensor, we'll uh, we'll get it uh, off, and hopefully deliver this baby. I had to use um, an E8 Torx socket. If I can get that in E8 E8. And they came out real easy. So we're gonna chalk that up to PB Blaster. Not a sponsor. Harbor Freight, not a sponsor. Um, but yeah, got both of those out. You know, as I'm thinking about it, there's gonna be, I think, some challenges with getting things out of the way to deliver this baby. So, you know, it's loose. But, you know, oh, never mind. <laughs> I, think, I think I can get her. But we'll see. I'm going to fiddle around with it. And uh, I will let you know how it goes. All right. Wish me luck. Well, I wasn't expecting that to be the worst part so far. This is the connector for the O2 sensor. You can see it is a pinch and pull but I could not get a good purchase on that pinch at all. It sits in this little uh, holder, which there's very little play. This is, uh, these wires are taped down, so there's just very little play. I had to just, I hate to say it, but I had to crank this thing out of its little holder, which you see here sits like in there so I had to pull that out and then I had to get underneath with a little pick and lift this little tab that you see in, de in between the white area and the, the shroud here I had to lift that up while I was pulling on the oxygen sensor and which you can see right here so it does hook on that little nub and that was a pain. That was just brutal. Um, worst part so far. And we ain't done yet. But it looks like I can deliver the baby, as it were. So I'm just going to work this thing out. And uh, get rid of that gasket. You don't want two gaskets in there. So where's our gasket? You see our gasket. So those are always fun to take off these metal gaskets, but we'll get it off, and uh, we'll continue soon enough. A couple of minutes later, we got the old one out. We're gonna swap over our air fuel ratio sensor. And uh, we're going to swap off these uh, heat shields. You see there's some nuts that we have to remove. Four of them, looks like. Four. So we're going to take care of that right now. I don't have a uh, O2 sensor remover tool. So we're going to have to finagle that a little bit. See how that works out. Okay, got the four nuts off there. They were a little rusty, and we live in California, and so you can imagine if you're in the rust belt. But that just pulls right off the top. These uh, bolts remain on the back side. We're going to take that out. Just give it a little twist off. Okay, now we got the air fuel ratio sensor 
to remove. I did spray a little PV blaster on it. Just be careful. You don't want to get the uh, element that goes inside of your cat covered in anything. So I'm going to wipe off any excesses um, from the outside here before I start removing that ratio sensor. And you can see the new one. I don't know if we can see inside there, but it's a freshie. And California, it's going to be a carb one. It's an OEM. Got it at Toyota, as you saw on that label before. So we're going to have a fresh one on there. Hopefully get rid of that PO420 code. Stay tuned. Okay, friends. Uh, file this under do not try this at home. So my method for removing these O2 sensors without a proper socket is to use a pipe wrench with my improvised extens extension bar. Yes, that is a broom handle. It's kind of a cheap steel. Um, it's been used a lot. It's been taped up because the metal is splitting a little bit. But I make sure I get that pipe wrench on there tight, tight, get those teeth locked in, and then apply a little, little leverage, give it a crank, and it does break loose. So I got that loose, I'll probably reverse the process when I'm putting it on to the new one, but it does work. But I do recommend using the appropriate tool for the job. So it's got to loosen up a little bit more, but it is broken free. And again, that PV blaster, be careful you don't contaminate uh, the end of your air fuel ratio sensor. So it's off. You can see there's a little bit of chowdering sure the pros out there are cringing but some good edges still on there that I didn't even have to worry about this uh, white residue I've seen reports that maybe it's some fouling from silicone in the system uh, could be normal you know oxidation products uh, when I replaced the bank 2 cat I saw this also on the air fuel ratio sensor. It works fine. Uh, I don't see it as being a problem. Everything else looks legit. You can see a little bit more chowdering when I was trying to use the Nipex, Knipex pliers, because I didn't even know where the pinch point was due to the angle of that uh, um, dangle up there in the the female end of this plug so or is it male I don't know uh, but yeah I was just grasping in the dark there but now I know and hopefully you do too um, it's on there you gotta pinch and pull if you can get that pinch otherwise you're gonna get a pick in there and lift lift the little retaining tab off this nub that little nipple there and uh, yank it I mean, pull it gently by not grabbing the wires, of course, right? Okay, now we're going to swap it to the new one. We got, you can see we got the new, uh, I mean, we got the heat shields put on there. That's a 10 millimeter, by the way, 10 millimeter nut. So let's go at it. I don't use any never seize, anti seize on this. Um, just because there's always that risk of contamination, that seems to be an issue. So let's tighten that up and uh, we'll get after that gasket that's still left on there. See you soon. And so after doing the shenanigans with the gasket, mine usually end up looking pretty beat up. You know, you just, again, if you uh, know an easier way to remove these, it's just a lot of wiggling and tugging and trying to get them over those threads. Um, yeah, if you got any suggestions. But it's off. Now we got to prep the surface. 
So here's the surface where the header was and the gasket. We're going to go over and clean up all this surface, make it nice and shiny and smooth so that we can get good contact, get everything uh, fitting up tight so we don't have any leaks. All right, see you in a bit. I will be I will be using a brass bristle bristle brush and a little bit of brake clean to make it all go away. Shine it up. Don't use anything too aggressive. You don't want to dig into the surfaces here. Some people use a razor blade. I would say if you're going to use a razor blade, use it to scrape gently rather than cut into anything. Uh, this is aluminum, and so you will scar the car okay so it's coming along pretty well and scrubbing away at it this is a brass brish bristle brush and using the old brake clean I don't have sound effects sorry gang but uh, it's not a pleasant thing to be spraying brake clean above you so I get my head well out of the way and kind of drips on my torso um, the other thing is after we get that done I like to give a little once over on these threads just to give them a little touch of cleaning can't hurt hopefully make things go back together better now here's something crucial we're gonna come back here and you can just see it poking out get rid of this we got a new one so we're going to do that swap that out i'm going to brush around above in there i can't really see that well the camera helps actually for a change just use the back end here just clean out any debris Yeah, rust. Great. And as I mentioned, we're going to wait to put those uh, bolts back that go through here so we can get everything lined up. Here's the downstream O2 sensor. I think this is an O2 and not an air fuel, but I don't, yeah, I think so. So I think the first one is the air fuel, fuel ratio. And, uh, yeah. Anyway, we'll get all these parts ready and then we'll just we do a wipe down with a cloth and the, uh, and the brake clean on there and we'll throw on the new gaskets. And we'll be back. Alright, for the header gasket, notice this is the way I pulled it out. This was facing out away from the engine. You can see the black dark color the side facing the head there you go shiny let's take a look here it's the dark the black shiny so we're gonna place it on dark side out shiny side in towards the engine and then we got our gasket here seems to be bi-directional or whatever goes in either way so we're going to slap that on for the uh, exhaust side gasket just make sure you get a good seat give it a little spin stay on there pretty good give it a spin and somehow factor in all right now we're going to go to the gasket I didn't take it out of the bag yet so hold tight okay let's get our lighting a little better here if we can a little better angle that looks decent a little tab goes up top and these are always some shenanigans just like taking them off try to get it on flushly like so 
on one motion. Hopefully it stays in there and it kind of finds its home. Get in your home. Something like that. All right, that looks pretty decent. I think we're ready to uh, bring back the baby. We got our cat. We're gonna find this little opening here to return the cat in. I believe this is a stabilizer bar, possibly. Um, this is a rack, steering rack. Yeah, you can see that good stuff. We're gonna have to go in over that, over that. So we just kind of reverse it the way we put it in. Let's see if I can get a view here of going in. Mind you, I'm one-handed. Probably not making for good video, but we're getting there. Get our wire out of the way, our little pigtail. All right, that was kind of funny. Gonna walk it, walk it in, walk it like a dog. Eh? All right, let's see. I will just do this the right way, and we'll get back to it. Okay, I got her up there high and tight. That's our mating surface there. And then, of course, lighting. Always fun. Underneath. We're gonna have to get it onto the header bolts up in there. So we're going to just play around with the puzzle that it is and try and get everything lined up. All right, I will be back, successful or not, I'll be back. And all of about 30 seconds later, I got, got her in, it wasn't bad, it wasn't bad, we got her pigtail out of the way, can run that up, plug it in, that can wait. We got a good mating here. We're gonna run those Torx uh, ended bolts back up in there. So that stays. And we can start buttoning her up, as they say. Get everything in there and then we're gonna have some fun with, uh, you know, trying to get into those tight spots again. And uh, of course everything will be down to torque. Those values I will look up let you know okay so my spotlight died so I don't have the best lighting right now but these I screwed in until they were bottomed out oh every light is dying great I guess about four hours I get out of charge for these you know, what you gonna do? We'll get another light. But we can see a little bit here, and the other one is tucked around. And the bottom goes out, and then we got some nuts for those. Ah, yeah, yo. Got some nuts for those that are hiding. And I looked up some torque specs. I use the new ones here. We got new ones. Might as well. Boy, I can show that I did something. Um, these, I believe, are 41 pound feet or 41 foot pound. However, you'd want to say it. And then the ones, let's see if I can do a flashlight. Okay, yeah. Anyway, I'll need some more lights, but the ones on the header, the exhaust manifold header, I believe are 46 pound-feet. 
I don't have the Newton meters on that, but yeah. yeah. My Google Foo is a little weak right now. I think I need to eat some lunch, so I'll do that. I'll eat some lunch and uh, charge up these lights and we'll return. But hey, so far we've uh, gotten through a good chunk of it. Uh, just a note here that, uh, let me see, I'll, um, I want to just make a note of things that um, come up when PO420s and PO430s codes come up. When my Bank 2 cat went bad, for reasons I won't explain uh, right now, but uh, I tried everything in the book. I got out the uh, sea foam, sprayed it in there and ran that through, sprayed it literally into the cat and ran it through. I tried the uh, acetone in the gas tank, a full gallon of acetone with uh, six or you know half a tank of uh, gas in the car, so somewhere like six to eight gallons or whatever it is, and uh, drove that around for four hours. just high uh, RPMs and nothing worked. Uh, I'm not going to say it won't work for you. You can try Cataclean and all that stuff, but you know this vehicle had 200,000 miles on it and when I looked at those uh, uh, little um, uh, catalysts inside the, the cat when I removed it, they weren't crudded up and dirty and all that, so I think they were just spent. So just take that with a grain of salt. Um, I don't even know if you can see me, but sometimes that code comes up and you just gotta change the cap. I don't know if that was Eric the car guy or somebody uh, mentioned that, you know, chances are pretty good that that code comes up. You're gonna need a new cat. And uh, it was the case uh, from my experience. So now we're on our second cat a year later at like 223,000 miles, I can't remember. Um, but when I was running my little uh, cheapo OBD um, code scanner, you know, I could see that that uh, downstream oxygen sensor was very erratic. So I knew that the time was short on that uh, second cat, the bank one. So its number was called and we're swapping her out. Uh, total parts costs may vary for you. It could be, um, depending on where you live, less than what I paid, but with uh, my local Toyota shop, we got a few around here in uh, my town, San Diego, and I noticed that, uh, you know, prices varied a bit. But I was out the door at $560, $560, and uh, took the quotes on that uh, to replace it were pretty high um, 1000 1200 something like that so half price do my own labor and hopefully help out a few other people so all right I'm gonna take a break um, no need to watch the putting it all back together oh crap <laughs> no need to watch putting it all back together if uh, if you don't want to but uh, I will continue the video so thanks for watching so far and I'm back. I got my little headlamp, like Ivan. Learned a lot from you, buddy. Um, actually, I don't even know him, so but I'll call him my buddy. And of course, Eric O. So lights are charging. Still, it's going to be a little time, so I'm going to have to mock up some tiny lights. You know, the uh, going freebies. I'm going to be throwing some of these around, notoriously frustrating to get them to stick, they're little magnets, but hey, they put out some good light, so no complaints there, just getting the camera here. Also, I am, this is my first YouTube video, so my apologies for slow speaking, ands, ifs, ums, whatevers, um, that is something I hope to work on if I do more of these and I speak slowly so you can watch this at 1.5 speed if you'd like and you could uh, get through this pretty quickly 
And also, I'm hoping that you don't mind me showing the turn in a wrench. Uh, that should be self-explanatory. So, a lot of the basic stuff I hope you are familiar with uh, as far as uh, working on vehicles. So, we're going to get right back at it. Thanks. And we have some, some light, so it looks okay. I got the nuts on there down finger tight and we're gonna cinch them down and torque them. These I believe were 46 foot-pounds and these back here are finger tight right now. Also I believe these are 41. Then we're gonna have that bracket that goes in this spot here. That's like 15 foot-pounds and so my small torque wrench is an inch pound, so I believe that's 180 inch pounds for torquing that bracket down. It was easy to remove, so um, that makes sense. So we're going to hopefully have enough room to fit that torque wrench in there. Otherwise, we're going to go by touch, go by feel. So we will uh, be back in a bit. Shout out to car wizard sometimes he says the best way into something is to travel use those extensions and that's what I did to get the torque wrench through there it's a long handle so I had to get all up in there I don't know if you can see from that angle but I was able to get it torqued down to spec on the exhaust side. Do note that when you're putting the heat shield back on, leave a little play in it so you can get all the bolts, the ones up top and all that. If you crank this down, there's not going to be a lot of wiggle room to try and find the home for those bolts. So give it a little wiggle room and then uh, crank them down tight-ish. I don't know a torque spec on that, but wouldn't worry too much about it as long as it's secure and it's not going to rattle itself loose. And we're under the bracket. You can just see that bolt up there. Just loose through the nut on that bolt. And then we have the bottom of the bracket. Remember, don't screw everything in too tight so you have a little room to work with. We'll play. Give it a little wiggle. Oh, that's going in kind of funny. Don't cross threads. Make sure you get everything in right. There we go. Boy, that is going in kind of funny. So let me uh, investigate that. It doesn't feel crossed, but we don't want to screw it. So I wasn't able torque down that upper bolt. Let's see if I can get that in the picture there. This upper bolt here. I couldn't get any angle, so I did it by touch. This one I got torqued down to the 180 pound inches, 15 pound feet. And then up top, our plug back in yeah that's just sitting in that bracket thing there I don't think I was able to lock it back in the plug is secure it's fastened correctly but in that little um, uh, holder for the uh, female end or male end whatever the light gray one on the left is just sitting in there. I probably could secure that down, but I'm not going to worry about it. That's kind of the only hang up with this whole thing so far. I haven't done any uh, checks on the code. I'll have to clear out the old codes and see if it comes up uh, again. But got my fingers crossed. But I think everything went pretty well. Everything's pretty secured in there. 
Well, it's all locked down, torqued up. Everything looks as I'd hope. So there weren't too many videos of this uh, process. I guess it's so frustrating, but having done the bank two cat, I learned a lot along that process. And so this one wasn't too bad. If I had to do it again, I wouldn't cry. So there we have it. Probably took, you know, with breaks and everything, five, six hours. I don't know what it pays, but that's what I got it done for. And uh, the wife, aka the client, should be happy. Let's see how it goes. Back in the vehicle, we got our Ansel scanner here. And we're going to check. Just want to show you um, codes again current P0420 catalyst system. Well, you can read that. Pending. Same. Let's exit out. I'm just going to show you. Things are, well, that's not what I wanted. Yes, this one. All right, just gonna call up, hopefully. So you can see green pass everything, but we know there's a code <clears throat> for the catalytic converter, but EVAP system, O2 sensors, it says even cat check, that's hilarious. Anyway, um, we're gonna show you the instrument cluster here. We got money light, fire up the car. And we see those codes pop up. The car sounds pretty good. I don't hear any loud exhaust leak noises or any of that sort of thing. All right, I'm gonna shut her down. Put the brake on still. Shut her down and uh, clear codes. See how we do. Hmm, I can smell that cat a little heating up and uh, burning off some of those oils. So we're going to do erase codes. Clear, reset, yep, enter. Ignition on, engine off. And it's been cleared. So we should see current codes. No fault codes, pending, no fault codes. Incidentally, uh, we're going to fire it up then. Let's see what we got. Okay. I don't see any codes right now. It's going to read codes. Current, no fault codes, pending, permanent, does not support. So I'm going to let it run up, run, run and heat up, and uh, we'll see what we get. If there's anything crazy, I'll let you know. I'm going to go through and uh, take a look at the data stream while we're letting the car heat up so we're going to be looking for this only lets me do three uh, three graphs on this one so we're going to be looking for those uh, bank one sensor two we'll take that one bank one 
offensive one. And let's do uh, short term fuel, fuel trims. See how that looks. might be kind of hard to make out. This isn't the ideal uh, system. So short term fuel trim bank one is running down negative. So oxygen sensor bank one sensor one that's actually that uh, air fuel sensor and we got a zero voltage on our bank one sensor two must not be hot enough yet I'm gonna reckon unless I broke it but I would think maybe a code would come up by now um, let's exit out of that view all items see if we're in the open or closed loop like it's getting warmer closed loop short terms are negative so that should be pulling those long terms down I would think over a little time Bank two run a little negative. Spike air temp. Mass airflow. Everyone's favorite. Alright, we got some readings on bank sensor one. Excuse me, bank one sensor two. Giving it some revs. Mm, it's pretty steady. Bank two sensor two. Let's check uh, those air fuel. Yeah, they dance around a little bit. That's what we'd expect since they're the uh, pre cat. And let's just see here. All right, we're good. A little better numbers as we start to warm up a bit. Let's go back around. The sensors are starting to heat up. Pretty stable. So, we could go back and do the graphic items. And do the loo. Getting a little warmer. See that mileage on there? She does burn a little oil. Maybe, uh, Port every 5,000. Guesstimate. I keep an eye on it and add a little here and there. Bank one sensor two, we wanted that. And we want bank one sensor one. We can go back and do bank one or bank two sensor two. So we got red, bank one sensor two, green, bank two sensor two, and blue, bank one sensor one. So we're interested in that red line. Bank one sensor two. See how it behaves. 
Yeah, there's a little movement. A little movement. Let's see what we get here. Point nine one five versus uh, bank two point seven eight zero. Curious. May take a little breaking in period. I'm not sure, but I think it's uh, decent. I think it's decent. Maybe it just got to stabilize out. But it looks pretty steady. Anyway, I still don't see any codes coming up. We'll give it a few drive cycles, I guess, and I'll report back if anything does show up. So there you have it. After uh, five, six hours of work, you might be able to do, do it in a little less. Took a break for a uh, quick breakfast and quick lunch. But I got her done, and it looks like it was a success. Hopefully, uh, you'll get success too. And remember, it's my uh, first YouTube video, so I hope that uh, you're not too harsh on me in the comments, should anybody see it, and comment. So I appreciate you uh, going along for the ride. Good luck to y'all. We'll chat soon.